So we move on to another perspective, and that's from uh, Asia's most progressive tourism board. With 20 years of experience in the information systems industry, our speaker was brought in to spearhead and implement technology initiatives within the board, as well as create a culture of technological dexterity. Please welcome Kwek Chun Yang, CTO for the Singapore Tourism Board. Hi, good morning everyone. I'm very happy to be here today to share with you a little story about how Singapore is moving on and trying to transform our tourism business. The Singapore story is quite simple, um, but perhaps in places it's a little bit strange. I'm probably one of the very few uh, tech entrepreneurs who is now uh, the CTO of a national tourism organization, and I thought it would be interesting to share a few perspectives from that. You've heard a lot about how technology is shaping the travel industry, so let us share a few some of our plans and what we're working on in the sunny island of Singapore. So we look around us, and our strategy is actually segmented into three major pieces. The first is, of course, the software. Singapore has a lot of very great events, both in business and leisure areas, from very sport-centric things, such as uh, international rugby, uh, Formula One, to arts and cultural events, and so on. This is backed up by a very strong set of infrastructural uh, venues and, and attractions. Um, this is what we term our hardware. But there's a third area, which is our strategic location and access to the rest of the world. Singapore sits at the center of Asia. We're within a six-hour flight time to almost everywhere, all the capital cities within Asia. And we have over 6,000 international flights every week from over 100 international carriers. So this puts us in a good position to attract a lot of incoming visitors as well. Last year was a fantastic year for the Singapore Tourism Board. We had a historical year with the most number of tourists ever to visit Singapore, over 16 million. And we have the highest tourism receipts as well, over 24 billion US uh, Singapore dollars. However, as you know, if you are familiar with Singapore, we never sit on our laurels and we always try to push to the next area of improvement. But we also understand that there are areas where there are some headwinds that we can see coming into our business as well. The first is, of course, something that we've discussed quite extensively over the last couple of days, which is that consumers are becoming very technologically savvy. As you have heard this morning, mobile is already a very big factor in how visitors and consumers like to access services and content. And the other part, of course, is that we have competitors in Asia who are also improving their products and experiences. So what can you do with this? Well, we're looking at it from three separate areas. The first is, of course, how do we deepen the insights that we have into what our visitors need through data and analytics? The second is, of course, trying to deliver a better experience to all of them, and then working with our stakeholders in the third area to build up competencies and capabilities. We work with over 40,000 stakeholders or companies around the world to try to build up our tourism business and as we empower them and build competencies and capabilities with them, we're basically helping them to help us succeed. So what does it look like? Um, a lot of the tech people will tell you it's about analytics and so on, but I figure it might be easier to tell you a little story and walk you through a little scenario for how this could actually work. So if you imagine you're flying to a typical airport, it's very usual, right? There's a mad rush to run through the immigration counter, and then hopefully you stand in there for no more than half an hour, then you rush out and try to wait for your bags. And hopefully it's not lost or compromised in some way, and then you go out and hit the taxi queue. Pretty standard across all airports in the world, right? Well, in Singapore, we have service-level agreements with our airports and immigration authorities to make sure that from the point of time where your plane lands to the point where you get to the taxi queue, it's a fixed amount of time. But the question is, with data analytics, with collaborations with our stakeholders, can we do better? So imagine a future scenario like this. When you walk down, the immigration authorities has most of the information. The minute they stamp on your passport, you're already checked into a hotel. Your mobile phone becomes the key, right? And you, as you walk through, you don't have to pick up your bags because we already know which hotel you're going to. Just go straight in and you have an Uber or a Grab taxi waiting for you. So immediately, within five minutes of leaving the aircraft, you're actually on the way to your hotel. You could actually go somewhere else. You could go straight to a meeting. 
can go straight to explore an accommodation or go to a, one of our attractions. In, in very few places in the world, I think, you will actually trust the airport authority to not manhandle your bags and that you are back to actually arrive where you think they would. And I think Singapore has one of the few advantages of being very safe and very secure. So that's generally how we think about enhancing our visitors' experiences by combining both policy reviews, optimizing across their entire experience, and using analytics to drive that. So one part of that, of course, is then we have to build the analytics. So we have actually started work on this, and we call it STAN. It stands for the Singapore Tourism Analytics Network. And what we're doing is we're analyzing data from cellular towers, um, your mobile lo geolocation services. We're taking tourism receipts, expenditure information from credit card providers, retail outlets, and so on, and combining that into a mashup. So let me share with you some of the interesting insights that we've learned so far. The average, we actually have been able to identify certain segments of visitors from certain source countries and cities who like to switch accommodations on their third day. Why do they do that? Well, that's a part of the ongoing research. But if you, one of the things that we notice quite interestingly is that South Koreans, for example, on the third day, they like to upgrade their hotels. Now, if you're a hotel chain, that's potentially quite an interesting piece of information, right? You have a group of hotels from mid-tiers to high-tier hotel rooms. It might be interesting to package that into something for the South Koreans. Another area they were looking at, of course, where people move around. So using the movement analytics, you can actually identify how long they stay at each of these attractions, what's the proportion and amount of time that they spend at certain types of leisure or business activities, and then help package interesting experiences into a whole. So one thing that we discovered, for example, is, well, if, if I had to ask you today, visitors from China, right, before they visit our integrated resorts, do a little bit of gambling, you know, do a little bit of shopping, where do generally people like to go before that? It's a little bit like wine pairing, isn't it? What goes with what? So what we found was, well, Chinese visitors like to visit the temples. So our initial hypothesis is, of course, you go to the temple, pray for good luck before you hit the poker tables. Makes sense, right? But in hindsight, and this is, I think, generally how insights work. When I tell you the insights, it's crystal clear, it's fantastic, 2020 hindsight, it's really fantastic. But when you pose the question from the front, it's usually very hard to reverse engineer why that could be and what could be that string of events that lead together. So like I said, it's a little bit like wine pairing, and this is the part of things that we're trying to get right. So the other piece that we're working on, of course, then, well, when we talk about tech entrepreneurs and all these interesting solutions that people are working on, one piece that works, one piece that's always missing is, well, where do all these content and services come from? You want to build a very interesting app for people on how to get around Singapore and so on. But where is all this content going to come from? So we are actually building something called TIH, or the Tourism Information and Services Hub, where all the available information, all the latest deals, what's available, all the content, what events are coming up, when does it start, how to get from point A to point B, what's interesting that's along the way, could all be integrated. Let me show you how this works. Introducing the Tourism Information and Services Hub. This is a one-stop B2B platform that will change the way tourism businesses can update and market their products. Today, businesses have to manually update content with their various business partners. This could be resource-intensive. Content received may not always be the most updated nor relevant. With the Tourism Information and Services Hub, or the TIH, we aim to move our tourism industry towards a new hub and spoke model. This model will empower businesses to now have ready access to both contribute and extract the most up-to-date information in travel services with just one single connection. So what can businesses access the Tourism Information and Services Hub for? As a start, it will house content such as destination editorials, images and videos, deals and promotions, business listings, and walking trails. Services will also be developed for usage, such as enhanced navigation map, itinerary planner to help visitors plan on the go, recommendation engine to provide customized suggestions, and chatbot to provide real-time assistance. In short, the Tourism Information and Services Hub will help businesses to save time. With this single integration, companies would need to just update once for their content 
which would be shared real-time across TIH users. Businesses would also have access to a much wider audience to increase awareness of their offerings. There would also be a rich and varied mix of tourism products and services made available, which businesses can use to customize their own products. Our intent is for the Tourism Information and Services Hub as a central digital platform to provide our tourism industry with increased online exposure and access to a wide variety of rich content and for consumers to have instant access to quality information and services across a range of online channels. By integrating with the TIH, we will be able to contribute updated content to create greater awareness of Sentosa's offerings. The new version of My Sentosa app will be able to extract and customize the services that are available on the TIH. As a tour operator, TIH offers us greater exposure for all our products, be they amphibious boat tours, hop-on, hop-off bus tours, and any other products that we may be producing. Visitors can make use of walking trails at specific precincts along our bus routes or stop at food places using our mobile-enabled platforms. We are really excited with the collaboration with Singapore Tourism Board on the Tourism Information Hub initiative. It's a great initiative. It gives the content for our sales team almost on a real-time basis. It really helps to customize the products uh, as per the need of the customer. With little budget and manpower resource issues, being associated uh, and integrated with TIH allows us to reach out to a much, much wider audience and allows DMC's event planners to know the work that we do and distribute this information to their visitors. We can only achieve this in partnership with you. So please join us now in making the Tourism Information and Services Hub a success. So as you can see, really what we're trying to do then is combine analytics in real time, content and information, everything in real time, delivered right to the fingers of our consumers as and when they're exploring Singapore. We're hosting a little networking session later, and if you have more questions, I'm happy to help address them. Thank you.